Thank you. Good evening. I hereby call the meeting of the Ordinance Committee for March 8th, 6 p.m. to order. Good evening. Um, this is the Ordinance Committee, and it consists of Councillor Sparwell, Councillor Rodriguez, Councillor Minicello, Councillor Lally, and myself, Shirley Azak. We also have our Legislative Council here, Attorney Resnick. Um, Attorney Resnick, item number one. Number one, ordinance, chapter two, article three, division eight, superintendent of public buildings of the ordinances of the city of Brockton is hereby amended by establishing an inspectional service department within the building department. Invited to attend, Councillor at large, Winthrop Farrell, Jr., Mayor Robert Sullivan or designee, Solicitor Megan Bridges or designee, Executive Health Officer, Dr. Eno Montessere or designee, Inspector of Buildings, Superintendent of Building, James Pluff, Fire Chief Brian Nardelli, Deputy Fire Chief Edward Williams. Thank you, Attorney Resnick. Um, Mayor Sullivan did contact me earlier today to let me know he is not able to be here this evening. He had a previous engagement, but he did send us a letter that uh, we'll have Attorney Resnick uh, read into the minutes. Um, this is a letter from the mayor to um, the ordinance committee. It just says, uh, to be aware that he was unable to make tonight's meeting uh, due to a family commitment and to please consider this letter as his support for the establishment of an inspectional services department within the building department. And if they have any questions, to feel free to contact his office. Thank you. So, Councillor Farwell, you'd like to start the presentation? Or? Thank, Thank you. you, Madam Chief. Madam Chair, members of the Ordinance Committee and members of the City Administration who are here this evening, by way of background, when this ordinance was filed back in August of, this, of last year, it was always my hope that we would provide a structure within city government for fair, uniform, consistent enforcement of laws and ordinances. And that's what the ordinance was intended to do. And after filing, I asked to have some people get together as a technical working group to go over the ordinance and make sure that we do exactly what we need to do that will best benefit the city and do it in a cost-effective way. So the working group consisted of you, Madam Chair, I thank you for your time, consisted of Council President Nicastro, it consisted of Fire Chief Nardelli, Deputy Chief Williams, Chief Legal Officer and City Solicitor Megan Bridges, and our Building Commissioner Jim Plouffe. And collectively, we met several times, I would say about five or six times, and we went over exactly what we wanted to do and what was the best way of arriving at an ordinance that would accomplish what I think will contribute to the health, welfare, and safety of all of our residents. You know, code enforcement is more than just having a fire alarm system. It's more than just having a clean dumpster. It's building inspections, it's electrical inspections, it's plumbing inspections, it's keeping yards clean, inspecting and making sure that dumpsters don't have rats and vermin around them. It's making sure that businesses keep their property clean. And clearly in this city, I think the residents want that. I think they want a very, very clean and effective code enforcement system that's fair and that is uniformly enforced. And let me say a little bit about enforcement first. Education comes before enforcement. I've always believed that if you have a body of law or regulations, you help people understand those laws and regulations, you tell them what's expected, and then you give them an opportunity to comply. The enforcement part comes in if you have people that just say, I'm not going to bother to do that. I don't really care what the city looks like. I don't care what business regulations you have. I'm not going to follow that. At that point, unfortunately, you have to step up and you have to enforce your regulations or, quite frankly, they need not be on the books. So I thank, again, all of those people who worked on this group. Uh, I know that our Legislative Council, Attorney Resnick, and the Chief Legal Officer, Megan Bridges, have worked collectively, and there are some amendments that should be made to reflect precisely what we want to accomplish with our code enforcement program and our inspectional services department. And then after that, obviously, the members can ask questions of the other uh, city officials who are here. So if you don't mind, Madam Chair, I'd like to ask that Attorney Resnick and uh, Solicitor Bridges perhaps come up and explain to the committee 
the changes that are being recommended. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor um, Attorney Bridges, did you want to come up? Good evening, um, as Councillor Farwell said, well, thank you for hearing from me. Um, as Councillor Farwell said, uh, I received a copy of the ordinance after it was filed or maybe simultaneously with the filing. Um, I looked at it with my staff, we made some recommendations, spoke with the current department head on what the needs were for the department, um, and then based on the original filing, some amendments were suggested. Um, and I think in, so what I, you have in your packet tonight is the original filing from Councillor Farwell. And the, the original filing creates one position that is, or it creates in, a Department of Inspectional Services, and it creates a position of the Chief of Inspections or Inspectional Services Coordinator. Um, some of the amendments that are being offered, I think through Councillor Farwell and the working group, create two positions. They create the Department of Inspectional Services, which is charged with um, administering and controlling all building inspectors, plumbing and gas inspectors, wire, sealer of deputy and weights and measures, health inspectors, including um, sanitary food code enforcement. Um, and so it creates a department where all of those inspections are consolidated. The head of the department is Mr. Pluff, and then two positions would exist, a deputy director or a deputy building commissioner, and then a chief of inspections, um, yeah, I think that's what we called it. Yes, the chief of, <coughs> chief of inspections. And the duties would be um, conferred from the superintendent of buildings to the deputy inspector of buildings and the chief to oversee the performance of such inspectional duties as may lawfully be delegated to them by several departments, boards, and commissions. Um, so this is a, an organizational change within the city, the way the city government is structured, <coughs> which is lawfully um, that authority is lawfully conferred upon the council. So that is what um, MGL Chapter 43, Section 5 provides, that the council decides the organization of the city government for the most part, and this would be modifying the building department to become a department of inspectional services with all those folks reporting to the secession as I explained it. So. Uh, we provided a red line version of the changes to Councillor Farwell's filing, and I think Attorney Resnick has those and has, a, has prepared the amendments for you all to consider. Okay. One thing that I just wanted to put on the table is you all need to decide. Oh, I'm not sure. You all need to decide how the two well, if you're, how you're going to create it, but who makes the hires for the two new positions? Are they Mr. Pluff's hires? Are they the mayor's hires? Do they need to be confirmed by council? All of those questions are policy questions and um, not legal questions. And then also, um, if, you know, if Mr. Pluff is going to hire the person, does it just need a mayoral approval? How long of a term are these folks going to have? They're, they can't have employment contracts, but do you want them three-year appointments? Do you want them five-year appointments? So there are suggestions for all of these points in what is being offered to you in the amendments. But from a high level, brand new department, two new positions, a suggested salary scale, as well as a job description. One is just technically the commissioner when he's unable to perform the duties and or a day-to-day -day person. Most departments have a day-to-day -day second in command. And then because we're creating a department of inspections, someone to oversee day-to-day -day all the inspectors. Um, is there any general questions on that? Thank you. That's the framework. Thank you. Attorney Resnick, should we uh, read in the amendments or should we wait on that? But Whenever, if you want to accept these amendments, um, so we need a motion to accept the amendments? Yep. Motion and then to I... accept the amendments. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor of accepting the amendments? Hold on a sec. Uh, on, the, uh, on the motion. Yes, Carlos. Okay. 
the uh, the amendments that I see here, they they state throughout that the uh, the mayor may appoint an officer known as the deputy inspector of buildings, who shall serve a term of three years. But I like to um, I like to make all these appointments subject to council appropriation, a council at ratification. I withdraw my motion. I'll withdraw the second. Okay, the motion's been withdrawn. I think, I think, Madam Chair, I think there should be uh, whatever, whenever positions are appoint, appointed positions in the sense, I think they need to come to the council for ratification. That is certainly a change that you can make. Um, and so there's, there's two positions, and so you want to deal with that issue how you desire, but you want to deal with it, you want to make sure you handle it in both places on the amendment. Well, the reason why I'm saying this, and it has nothing to do with who's the mayor at this time, but I think um, one of the issues that we have to look at, and the reason why we're doing this is because of the issues that we're having with the city itself, where the left has no idea what the right's doing, and we're trying to kind of put this all under one umbrella. I think if that's the case, I think this body, since we're the ones that actually takes all these phone calls and get our brains beat out in the sense, I think we, we should have a say on who the person is and uh, so that there's some accountability to this body as well from the whoever the person might be. That is completely up to you all and how you want to set out the hiring. I support that. Yeah. What do you think? Madam Chair, just a po Fala. point of inquiry to uh, Legislative Council. If, if Councilor Lally makes a motion to accept the amendment, can he add on uh, appointments shall be subject to confirmation by the City Council? Would that suffice? Yes. Yep, I have it written in here. That would be under Section 2-381.6A and also under 2-381.7A. Point of inquiry. Uh, so Lally. I would just say I'd like to make the motion. Uh, I'm, I'd like to mo move to accept the amendment as amended. You can just make a motion to amend, including the provisions that they be subject to city the positions be subject okay. to city council approval. In that case, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to amend uh, with the additional amendment that these appointments be subject to the approval of city, city council, council approval. Okay. Yeah. Do we have a second? A second. A motion has been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? Councilor Farrell, were you the second? Yes. Okay. We did second it. So the amendments are accepted as amended. Council Lally? I have uh, just one question for whoever wants to field it. Sure. Um, one of the duties for the Department of Inspectional Services would be, uh, you know, all duties relating to weighing and measuring devices and the prevention of giving false or insufficient weight or measure. Um, what happens to our Department of Weights and Measures? Does this put that department underneath the Department of Inspectional Services? So basically for budget time, we don't have that department now. That department's within another department. Is that? I just want to get a clear. They don't have their own budget. That might be a good question for Troy, but as an example, the, the, law, the license person reports to me, but they have their own budget. Okay. So that, I think, is not necessarily this, but the idea is that Mr. Croker and Mr. Quinlan would fall under the Department of Inspectional Services um, as the Division of Weights and Measures. In a chain of command sense. Right. Okay. So if you went on the city website and looked up city departments, that department may still be there? Sure. Yes. It, okay. I just... Um, I'm trying to establish exactly where that, like, I didn't know if that department would just cease to be and they'd be employees of inspectional services or, or what? The Department of Inspectional Services would include weights and measures. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All set, Council Lally? Council Rodriguez? No, I have a, actually a question for the fire chief, if I could. Sure. Vice Chief, uh, Chief Nadelli. Good evening, Chief. Good evening, Council. How are you? How are you? Good. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how far the public safety building is in terms of um, uh, development, uh, drawing. 
Can this new department be put under that same building in terms of, to me, that is also public safety. You know, it's a lot, you know, I see police and fire and then this thing, this department as being third to the two, you know, basic uh, public safety union, I mean units. Can this uh, new uh, department be housed under that new public safety building? So I, I know you've I know you've had this concern before when we came in before, and I, I understand. I think one of the problems we're running into is the size. Um, I think right now we're burgeoning at the block of space we have to fit what we have under us right now. Um, not to mention the um, I would have to say the economic boundaries for which we're in 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 the what what. That I think that the city's come before the council for with the mayor and the CFO in regards to um, the cost of that. Right now, we're at the cost that has been allotted. Um, I think that would drastically change things to add more space to that building. Um, I, I can't. I, I, I can't answer directly to that, but that would be a concern of mine. Um, one of the biggest issues is we're having is the size of what we need. Remember, we're taking, I know from the fire side I can speak of, we're taking the fire station on Pleasant Street, including the firehouse and the apparatus floor. We're taking the entire signal division. We're taking my entire headquarters, the entire fire prevention bureau, and the entire training and operations division, and taking that from one, two, three, four, four, five, uh, four and a half buildings and putting that all into one spot on top of that lot of land. It looks very large now. I think that will, it, it, it gets smaller as we have added into that position and the, and the designs are, are pretty advanced along right now without much on my side as far as to change that with the, with the, with the fire department side. Um, with all the other aspects of that neighborhood and the, 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 the different other infrastructures that are, things that are going on, and I know, I know there could be a financial component along there with that. So that, that's as far as I would be able to expound on that because my fear uh, chief is the fact that uh, when you look at the inspectors being in this building and then you're bringing in some of these other units under this one umbrella called the uh, inspectional services I think if we're not careful in keeping an eye on it in the sense it will be the silos that, it, that currently exist you know where the you know the health inspectors are doing their own thing and they're housed somewhere else this group is housed over here, and that group is housed over there. So I think it kind of, mm -hmm. you know, takes takes away from that coordinated effort where you might want to be able to reach out to the fire department and get some help, reach out to the police department and get some help. And that's that's my my thinking about this. You know, to keep it all under one roof or one area in the sense to make it a little more approachable in a way, and, and truly call it public safety because mm -hmm. I think those two uh, those two things go hand in hand. I, you know, I, I completely understand what you're saying. I think one thing to add to this, and I think Deputy Chief Williams and, and, and uh, Commissioner uh, Pluff could tell you is that they are in constant contact. They work together on a regular basis. I know that the, I know that, um, I'm, I'm not sure who made the decision, but all of those inspectors now that we speak of, correct me if I'm wrong, Commissioner Pluff, I think they've all been put into his purview up on the third floor in regards to, they've opened up that whole back room, they're all under there. And I know, just with the task force stuff that goes on, Commissioner Plouffe and Deputy Chief Williams especially, because remember, the fire department, we, we're here more as an advisory role with this, with this ordinance and the structural component and how we work with them. That's why Deputy Chief Williams and I were brought in on this. I think one of the things to look at is the working relationship they have, and we work with them on a regular basis. There's not an incident that I arrive on that I don't see uh, Commissioner Plouffe or one of his, one of his direct reports um, at that fire scene. So I, I do completely understand. I just, I, I don't know if it's a logistical space financial issue that could potentially be the problem there. Um, I know, I, I don't think, I, I think from my 27 years in this city working, I understand, to your point, about the silos that you speak of. I, I would have to, I, I would assure you that does not happen like it used to. Um, there there might have been that in the past, but I think the working relationship 
is is completely different now than there was before. Just because they're not housed under the same roof does not mean they're not in, in communication on a regular. I mean, I don't deal with the fire prevention end of it. That is really Deputy Williams' job. But I mean, I talk to Commissioner Pluff on a regular basis as well about other zoning issues and a number of things. I think most of you know me pretty well. If I have something, I'll call you. So now, also, because one of the other issues that I was actually kind of looking at is the fact that uh, a lot of our concern, especially when we meet up as a, as a body here, is we all know that we don't have enough inspectors. Uh, we don't have enough uh, health inspectors. Mm -hmm. And if we somehow put this group into this one little you know, can called the third floor of City Hall, in a sense, it does not allow for a lot of expansion you know, to actually grow this in the sense so that we don't run into the issues that we're running in as far as not having a lot of those services provided in the community in a sense. That's why, I, I mean, I don't know, I haven't been to the third floor to see how you guys are, are I mean, are up there, but I, I know from my days at City Hall that it's not a lot of room to begin with. I, I, can't, um, I can't speak, obviously, to exactly how that was set up up there. It is a nice big room. They, they do have quite a bit of space, quite a few desks, the way it's set up. I don't know if the commission would like to speak to that real quick. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, um, Chief. Well, thank you, uh, councils. Um, I would agree, City Hall is uh, bulging at seams. Um, we don't have much space for anything here. But I've reformulated this, the building department to incorporate the additional numbers of the Board of Health as it currently stands. Um, last January, uh, a year ago, this past January, I started the renovation of the third floor where I sat for a good number of you know, 18 years. And in that, t in that place, we had f six inspectors uh, actually, I'm sorry, eight inspectors. And it was v vastly outdated and didn't have enough space. Uh, we took down some walls, we renovated the place, um, lightened it up, took down the curtains, and now we can fit, ooh, 20, uh, almost 20 people in that, in that space. Um, we have my eight inspectors, I have, we have uh, three or four uh, members of the planning board, uh, uh, planning department in that space, Maybe 20 is a little bit much. It's probably maybe all at 16. And then I also have a couple extra spaces for um, uh, my head custodian and, um, and a couple of uh, empty um, computers. So that space was renovated. We took the, uh, what used to be the planning department and we installed um, oversized desks. It was just leftover desks that we had for the Board of Health Inspectors. And my intent is over the next year or two is to renovate that space, put in better workstations, and probably increase, increase the capacity of uh, number of desks there uh, by double. So I could probably put another, um, I could put about 10, 10 to 12 desks in that area. So we're, we're not talking, we're not talking a lot of filing cabinets anymore because we got rid of everything, all of our file uh, paperwork. We put that onto the, uh, onto the computer, scanned it in. So we freed up a lot of space for, for new desks. And the new desks we have are pretty much just workstations with a computer. Um, not too many filing cabinets anymore, so we're able to uh, minimize um, lost space in that area. Um, would I love a, a brand new building? <laughs> I would say yes. Would I love you to double my inspectors? I'd say yes also. But I know that's not a financial um, ability right now. So um, if, you know, I believe the space that we have can incorporate the, the staff that we are looking for in the inspectional services. If we ever expand, we may have a may, may have a question about space at that point, but I think currently with this number of people coming in un, under this uh, new ordinance, um, we are situated well. Oh, well, that makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> thank you, sirs. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Councillors, any other questions for anyone? Councillor Fawa. Uh, just uh, a quick question for uh, the city solicitor. The other provisions of the ordinance I filed with respect to uh, quarterly reports and filing a, a year-end report by March 1st of each year, uh, I take it that that remains? The amendments did not eliminate those provisions? <clears throat> During... The amendments that you all are considering are the product that was created during the working group. Um, 
as I read it, I don't see quarterly reports unless they're in the job description. Okay, it was, it was, uh, and that could, right, it was, it was, I'm sorry, it was redlined in the amendments that you gave us, but it was on page one of my, uh, there were two provisions on page one of the ordinance I filed. One was file a quarterly report with the mayor and city council, which shall contain but not be limited to the number of complaints filed for the quarter, the number of complaints filed for the year to date, a comparison with previous years, the status of the complaints, and any specific problems encountered with the zoning ordinance, and any recommendations for correction of such problems. And then by March 1st of each calendar year, file a report with the city clerk and city council with recommendations for additions or amendments to city ordinances to improve code enforcement. Uh, and I felt pretty strongly that having quarterly reports keeps us all up to date as to sure. what's going on. And, and uh, so. Let me look at this really quickly. It would be down at the bottom of the okay. page on the. Uh, so, and that was, that is my next question is who would you expect to be the author? The chief of inspections? the deputy position or the commissioner because and I'm only asking the question because the other thing you all item of the agenda number two creating the position comes with a job description it, and so you you can codify it however you'd like in terms of the desires it is the report is not within the amendment. So if you want the report in the ordinance of inspectional services as opposed to the job duties, then it would need to be amended. Okay, well, it, I had in here that the commissioner shall be responsible for the following duties, uh, which include but are not limited to, and then one of them was file a quarterly report and then March 1st of each calendar year. But of course, that could be delegated. The, the commissioner may say, I want the chief of inspections to do that. So I, I was not really hung up on articulating within the ordinance. I, I wanted to leave it to the discretion of the, of the commissioner uh, what would happen. So I, I don't know if uh, my fellow counselors could take a look at the original filing. Should be. But, but I'd like to see, uh, uh, I'd like to make sure we have in here that we're going to enforce the zoning code, uh, zoning code. We're going to have a zoning enforcement program and also the quarterly report and the annual report. Uh, does everyone have that on, on the original sheet that was? Well, it's here anyways, you know, crossed out, but it's still. It's still yes, it's, 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 it's on the redlined uh, section, which I suppose we could reactivate. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, Counselor, you can choose to ignore any deletions that were and there it wasn't a deletion for any any reason right. other than um the amendment that's in front of you is just a little bit more general um right, but you on can page two of the red line enclosure so-called i would like to uh move to include the paragraph that begins the commissioner shall be responsible for the following duties and responsibilities which include but are not limited to with the understanding that obviously he can delegate to to someone else to carry out those duties so and that's I, a motion I, yes second so are you including all of that or just um, no all of it all of it yep. even one assign daily and weekly duties uh no strike that actually no, that one doesn't need to no be i there. don't need Attorney that's, ex that's expected. Yeah. Oh. So here's what we have established. So we have a department head, okay. right, with the deputy inspector's buildings now. Okay. And we have the uh, chief of inspections. Okay. So you had previously called it the commissioner. Right. We just don't want the language to stay. It's the language of having a commissioner, and that's not the term being used. Okay. The other spot that it might work well in is the end here, which kind of says, So those, those three bullet, 
two, okay. three, and four. Yeah. Okay. By the way, we still have in there that residency is exempt. That didn't get axed out. Residency That's right. I, I agree with that. That's okay. fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I. Uh, okay. I, should I can explain that. I just want to. Be All right. I'm going to withdraw my motion uh, if the second would with withdraw and allow a legislative council to opine on this a little bit. Okay. So withdrawn. Yep. I just wanted to clarify because the prior language used the term the commissioner, and so we're not using that in our new draft. Um, so if you keep your old language on the quarterly reports and then to file a report with the city council um, with recommendations, that would be your items three and four. And include it now under the inspectional duties. Um, you can accomplish that goal, and I can draft that up. Okay. So I, having spoken with you, then I would move to include the language which you just uh, outlined. Yep. In the in the, and insert it where appropriate as you determined. Yes. This is a second. Second is already second. A motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Do you have any uh, yeah, further there's, questions? There's, or? there's one last thing I wanted to sure. do because they really worked, as you know, worked hard on this. I would like to ask the uh, Commissioner Pluff and, and uh, Deputy Chief Williams to come up and just talk a little bit about how this, this, this is not some political exercise. This is an organizational structural change that I really believe is going to move the city forward in terms of code enforcement and I, I think having their expertise here I'd just like to ask them to come up and speak about it a little bit and by the way nothing of what we do affects the fire department they they have their own fire regulations they have a board of fire prevention at the state level so nothing of what we do affects their operations however they are part and parcel with all of our other inspections that are carried out so uh, and I thank you both personally and professionally Thank you, Council, um, with Councilors. Um, I'm going to start with uh, just mentioning that two days ago, we went on our first task force uh, trip um, in many, many years. Um, the fire department, the board of health, the building department, and the police department all took part, and we traveled to numerous um, locations throughout the city. Um, I, I personally joined the, the crew, although I won't do that every week because I have other duties. Um, but I, I joined my Inspector DePina, um, two police officers, um, Inspector DeSette from the Board of Health, and Deputy Williams on the, um, on the, on the trip. Now, the Deputy and I are constantly in contact um, by a text, by telephone. Um, we, we'll talk to each other at you know, 7, 8 o'clock at night um, on weekends. We're always talking about uh, different aspects of the job and what we have to do the following week, um, what we had, what we did the past week, um, and with this inspectional services, that will now draw in the conversations of the board of health members into our conversations. Because currently, right now, as um, as one of the councils mentioned, silos did exist, and what the board of health did, we wouldn't know, the fire department wouldn't know, police department wouldn't know, except for those rare occasions where we went on the task force and we're all there at the same time. Now that we'll have an inspectional services, if you so wish to vote on it, um, the Board of Health inspectors will now directly report to me. And so if we go out on a, um, a call such as today, um, 55 North Main Street unfortunately was shut down, um, the illegal construction, um, dangerous situations inside, and we had to vacate people out of that building. We waited for an hour, hour and a half for an inspector from the Board of Health to show up. They finally showed up, but my inspector had to leave to do paperwork. So he wasn't there at the same time. And one line of control, one way of, of contacting these, uh, these inspectors would streamline the process. We wouldn't have to wait for that period of time. Uh, an instant phone call, hey, come on over here. And if you don't come over there, well, then there's, there's going to be some problems. Um, so it would help streamline the way we do our, our inspections. Um, when we go out on the task force, or we work with the Quality of Life Task Force um, during Thursday mornings, we'll be able to communicate easier because it's all going to have one person at the top um, directing all the, well, not all of them, but a good number of the people that are going to be doing those kinds of work. My, um, I have an administrative assistant in my office who is, is learning the Telemi software 
and it will be inputting all the information from the task force and the quality of life task force into um, into Tulemi to be able to um, track these things that we are we are doing in inspection services. So having all under one roof and under one department will help us be able to uh, respond more efficiently and um, together. And I will yield it to Deputy Williams. <clears throat> Thank you. I think what we've carved out in this ordinance is the best thing for the city at this point in time. <clears throat> we, in the fire service, we talked about command and control, and that's what we'll have out of the inspectional services department. I've said for years that the building commission of the city is overloaded, taking care of four building inspectors, two wiring inspectors, two plumbing inspectors, public property janitors, public property um, carpenters, electricians, plumbers, and his administrative staff. There's a, there's a span of control that you have to meet because one person can't do it all. And by creating this ordinance that gives him a chief, um, an assistant building commissioner, that may not be the correct wording, but deputy building commissioner, and a chief of inspections will allow him to delegate to these individuals who will then go down and delegate to other individuals. And I think we'll have a lot better program than we have in the city right now um, that we've kind of lost it the past few years, to be honest with you. And we're on an upswing now. We did go out in task force. We um, hit a couple of unlicensed garage, a garage that's um, not complying with the restrictions on the license, a basement apartment, an illegal rooming house, and uh, there was a third garage in there too, and a, a building with legal construction going on. And we could probably do it every day if we had the time, but the paperwork is what can kill you. Um, so uh, you probably all remember the days of the old task force. We were out a couple times a month, and that's what we hope to do um, again. And again, what we want to do is make the city better. Simple as that. One other thing, I'm going to dovetail on what um, Deputy just said. And go back to what we had talked about originally, uh, Council Farwell. Our intent is to educate, to start. And enforcement only occurs after we've tried to educate. And that's what happened yesterday with our, uh, uh, the other day when we went out for task force. We educated the people of what was going on. We didn't issue fines. We didn't write, you know, bring them to court. We said, listen, we have some issues. We're going to write them up, tell, them, tell you exactly what they are, and then we can go from there and try to help you solve those issues. So it's not, a, not an immediate penalty, but we're going to try to educate them first. And the more we get out there and the more our inspection services works together uh, with the fire department and the police department to educate, the, I think the less we'll see of uh, violations in the future. Uh, but it starts, starts tonight and um, as it goes forward, um, education and then enforcement. Well, we, Madam Chair, we've touched a little bit about the health department and I know Dr. Mondesi is here. Uh, and I know the other night I was probing some information from one of the Board of Health members. And, uh, and I want to say publicly, I've interacted with Dr. Mondesier many times. Wonderful human being, excellent person. He's the administrative head of the Board of Health, but we didn't hire him to be the health cop. This structure will give his department an opportunity to see that those important regulations, those important requirements that we have in the city are methodically, uh, people are accountable to follow them. And so I, I just want him to know publicly and I want the, my colleagues to know that if this is passed by the full council, he's going to be the administrative head. But we will have carved out, I think, a cohesive group of people to make sure that all of our regulations are followed to the best of, of our ability. It's not going to be perfect. I mean, there are going to be people that just say, I don't care, I'm not going to do it, but we're moving forward. And, and then six months after it's effective, as I said to the chair before, we'll come back and we'll examine how well we've done our job and do we have to change anything. So, but I just want the health department and Dr. Montesina to know that this is designed to help them get their regulations enforced uh, consistently, uniformly, and fairly to make for a better city. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. So I would just like to reiterate, I, Commissioner, um, thank you, and uh, Deputy Chief, thank you. Thank you for this, Chief, um, 
for everybody that worked on this. I'd also like to thank Councilor Farwell and Councilor Nicastro because it was really, um, you know, this is something that needed to be done. So I, I know the committee worked really hard on this and the work that attorney um, Bridges did on this. But I would like to re reiterate what you mentioned, um, Commissioner Pluff, about education. A lot of times, you know, we're all residents and we're not out to get people. This is just a good way to educate them. That way we can you know, it's to benefit them. It's to benefit their quality of life. So I think having uh, ordinances that are enforceable or that work is really important. But it's what you do on the task force to educate is the reason I think for this is because we need to educate our inspectors as well as, um, you know, our, the public. It's the only way that we can um, better the city. So th thank you for that because education is everything. Thank you. But thank you. Thank you again. Um, and no further questions. Do we? Do we? Uh, I, I've I, lost track a little bit. Do we need to make another motion to recommend favorably yes, as, as as completely amended? Or? Correct. Yep. Yes. Favorable. The motion would be to recommend favorable as amended. Okay. Are you making the motion, Councillor? Go ahead, Councillor Alley. I'll second it. Oh, it's, it's your baby, Councillor. I didn't want to step on your toes. Motion to recommend favorably as amended. And I second that. Motion has been made and far, uh, properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The, mo uh, the ordinance goes back favorably back to the full city council. And um, just point of information to Councilor Rodriguez. So two years ago, I asked that question that you asked this evening. Why can't we have a floor in the new public safety building that would be inspectional services since we are running out of room? Um, a few... I was given a few answers, but one of them, one of the biggest concerns was also having uh, civilians in the building with public safety officials. So, and also it would cost even more to go up. So I just, I, we, I asked, I asked the question because I felt we should really take advantage of this new, new building and the money that we're spending, but. Well, the last, the last I checked, uh, the folks from IT and the folks from uh, emergency management. Yes, they'll be in there. Yes. But I understand the cost. The cost uh, is a major issue. To that, Madam Chair, I got a similar answer. I, I had asked about <laughs> animal control. Uh, we keep hearing animal control needs a new building. I asked about this. I was told um, they wanted to, you know, they worried about civilians, but they were also worried about people with uh, pet allergies. So there are a lot a, of concerns. It was a bit of a, yeah. But I, we also can't put everybody in this new building. <laughs> so I guess the city, there has to be limits. I think we should put the council there. Oh, that would oh be, I love this room, though. We're, we're not leaving this, this building. Uh, thank you. Councilors, Attorney Resnick, item um, ordinance number two. Yep, okay. Ordinance number two. An ordinance amending Article 2, Section 28. Sorry, Article 3, Section 127 of the ordinances of the City of Brockton, hereby amended by inserting the following. Uh, category PR2, position name, inspectional service coordinator, chief of inspections, with a minimum of $83,130. Step two, at $87,287. Step three, $91,651. Step four, $96,233. Invited to attend, Councillor at large, Winthrop Farwell, Jr., Chief Financial Officer, Troy Clarkson. Um, Councillors, just so you know, the last page stapled to those amendments that I have were the amendments to um, item number two, which adds the chief of inspection. So we've Thank you, Attorney Resnick. I believe so. I think so. We pretty much covered the covered this. We don't have to motion to recommend well, favorably. The only thing that Move on. I think you need to do before you get into this is just the language. Um, so the language you have as the, um, I just wanted to clarify, the P2 category, is that the PR2, was that, is that the deputy inspector of buildings? Uh, huh. Take a look. <laughs> Thanks, Troy. Oh, these so. look a little different. Madam Chairman, I can probably help Thank with that. Thank you. Because um, I, I, I did bring the current pay ordinance with me. Okay. So you could use it as a reference. Uh, and Actually, not to interrupt. So my question is, the um, 
the ordinance that was just adopted changes the names of the positions that were originally proposed. Oh, I see what you're saying. And so if you look at um, the ordinance on the pay scale, I'm just trying to determine if that is now what was previously called the Deputy Inspector of Buildings. So in the, the, the published agenda that I have, it, it, uh, the Deputy Inspector is not on there. It's just the PR2. Correct. Uh, what I would say is that there are in the pay ordinance that this council uh, revamped significantly in 2021, there is a defined category for deputies in most departments. Uh, you have the assistant treasurer collector, the budget director, the assistant uh, human resource director, and they, they all fall, uh, the assistant solicitor, uh, all fall in the same category with the same pay scale. So uh, I, what I believe is that you're considering two positions, so I would suggest that the deputy position, for consistency's sake, it would make sense that that deputy's position would fall into the same pay scale as the other deputies within the, the, the pay ordinance. And that, that pay scale is... Uh, 106 917 to 116 831. Uh, as for the PR2, the chief of inspections, there is not currently a pay category that goes from 83 to 96. I'm not That's right. certain where that, where that came from, but there are certainly other categories in that general area uh, that, that, based on whatever the uh, knowledge, skills, and abilities are of this particular position may fit in one of those pay categories. Uh, Madam Chair. Councilor Fowler. I, I think uh, I'm going to rely on Mr. Uh, Commissioner Pluff for a minute. Uh, I think the, the deputy building commissioner uh, we, we covered in a meeting, if I'm not mistaken, and it is the, uh, uh, the amounts that were just read by by uh, the chief financial officer consistent with what you thought we should do for the deputy building commissioner? That is correct. The, the um, deputy building commissioner, which is on the, one of the amendments, would, have been, would be at that pay scale that the CFO mentioned. And okay. that the other pay scale, which you had in the original uh, filing, would be applied to the um, chief, of inspection. chief of inspections. Correct. And I think, I think we went over and we were comfortable with that, if I'm not mistaken. Am I right? Yes, as, as long as it's, 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 it, there's money in the, in the budget for that. Yeah. Uh, can you go over those numbers again for the... Uh, for the, uh, the deputy? The deputy councilor? Yeah, again, just for clarification, that, that fits with the, uh, the assistant auditor, the assistant treasurer collector, the budget director, the assistant human resource director. It's a, as with all of them, it's a four-step mm -hmm. scale that ranges from 106 917 to 116 831 and since uh what are the two middle numbers uh 110 125 and then 113 428 and consistent with the ordinance that you passed once people reach that top step in subsequent years they can receive up to a 5% increase based on a performance evaluation performed by the mayor. Or obviously his or her designee. Okay, I'm gonna make a motion here. You all set, Councilor, or do you have other and, questions? And by the way, I would, I would add in that the deputy commissioner is going to have to be certified by the Board of Building Regulations and Standards, which is a very complex multi-module uh, test, if, I, if I'm uh, right. He or she is going to have to have the same certification you do because they would actually be in command if you were out of, out of office for any reason or on vacation. Am I, am I correct? Yes, you are correct, Councilor. Okay, so that, that is probably the reason why the, the working committee adopted those those uh, figures because this this whoever is hired is really going to have to know the state building code and as well as managing people and that's why you see those numbers
So I, I, I yeah. guess I need to move so to. So, Councillor, are you all set, Councillor Rodriguez? No, I, I was actually going to make a motion that we change the, the position title. I have it if you that want me to read to it done, based yes. off of those numbers. Okay. Yes, please do. Okay. So the PR-2, the position name would be Deputy Inspector of Buildings. But, the, uh, Madam Clerk, um, I think we ought to call it the, because I intend to file a motion, I mean an amendment motion to change the, <clears throat> the position of building superintendent to building commissioner or commissioner of buildings. And I think since we already were talking about this particular position, instead of doing it and having to redo it again, we can actually call it a deputy of, deputy commissioner of buildings. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, just to let you know, then well, if we do that, at the next, when this matter gets referred to council, we'll need to do a motion to amend because the first item, you didn't make that change on the title. So oh, just- I, I think it only makes sense because again, we're trying to professionalize this whole setup. And to me, for us to continue to call the commissioner of buildings, the superintendent of buildings, it sounds like he's a building soup that all he does is basically takes care of the building. I think it needs to be more of a commissioner, uh, commissioner's title. Since now that position is being compensated at the level of the DPW commissioner. So you're making a motion, Councillor, to um, rename this position as deputy commissioner, commissioner of, of buildings. buildings. Okay. So that's in the form of a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and properly seconded. On the motion, I would just ask, do we know if there are other ordinances that mention superintendent of buildings? And I don't know unless I, if we're going to make this change, you'd literally have to go through any and all city ordinances that mention superintendent of buildings. And I, I haven't looked at that in a long while. So I don't mean to interrupt, but right now, it's just so, this one particular so it's just this one. I think Councilor Rodriguez is I'm for gonna future. File, I'm gonna going to file one as to soon change. as possible to basically change the name of that position to throughout, throughout the, throughout the okay. ordinances. All right, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Does that work? The, yep, I got it. So I'll a look. motion was made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The, um, the motion carries to make the amendment on the title. So then the next thing would be to set for the PR2 the minimums and through year fours, and it would be 106, that 106, $100,917, $110,125 for year two, $113,428 for year three, and then $116,831 for year four. So moved. Second. A motion has been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries favorably. And then the next one would just be on the PR3, Chief of Inspections. Um, that would go back to the minimum of $83,130, year two at $87,287, year three, $91,651, $96,233. I, I would move that favorably. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries favorably back to the full city council. And it's just if the council has a will to do it as a motion to recommend favorably as amended. Uh, motion to recommend favorably. As amended. As amended. Second. A motion has been made to um, send this favorably back to the full city council as amended. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries favorably. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, CFO, and Dr. Montezier. Thank you. Item yes. number three? Yes, item okay. number three. I was just giving you a minute to Thank you. recuperate. <laughs> Number three, ordinance. An ordinance amending Article 2, Section 28, compensation to provide the City Council President an additional $2,500 per annuum in compensation commencing January 1, 2024. Invited to attend, Susan DeCastro, Ward 4 Counselor, Chief Financial Officer, Troy Clarkson. Madam Chair. 
Yes, good evening, Councillor Councillor Lally. Just a, a question right off the bat, I suppose, for the sponsor and, and for uh, Attorney Resnick. Um, is the start of, so this would be uh, the start of the new term. Does the new term start January 1st? Yes. This, would ma this, okay. this change matches up with the same effect effective date of the council's increase. Okay. I want to be clear. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Nicastro. Thank you. And um, bouncing off what Councilor Lally just said, um, because it would start in the next term, I would not benefit from this at all. Oh, okay, I want to make that very clear. I'm not being self-serving. Um, why do I think this is justified? Well, I've been doing this job now for almost three months. And in that time, I've averaged between five and ten additional hours a week wearing the hat of the president, you know, doing the administrative work that results in our meetings four Mondays a week, a month, um, attending additional events and uh, places that I'm invited to that it's only because I'm the president, and doing other miscellaneous things, um, working with all of my colleagues on matters that come before us four Mondays a month. Um, so I do think it's justified, I really do. And then the next question is, what do other communities do? And again, reflecting on the research that was undertaken for us back in October, when we were um, considering increases in our, our own stipends, um, there is great precedent in other communities for um, paying a stipend, additional stipend, to the city council president. And the numbers are all over the place. Salem, uh, on the low end, Salem pays their council presidents an additional $500. Revere, it's an additional $2,000. Everett, it's an additional $2,600. Medford is three grand. Worcester, Lowell, and New Bedford, it's a, no, no, Worcester is four grand. Lowell, New Bedford, and Somerville, it is an additional five grand. Cambridge, it's an additional $44,325. But remember, in Cambridge, they're a city manager form of government, and, and the president of the city council actually takes the title of mayor there and does all kinds of ceremonial things. So I included it in because they were included in the research we received, but we really can't reflect on Cambridge very validly. They also had a $40 million surplus last year. Praise God. So those are the reasons why I think it, it is warranted. now. There are four council presidents sitting on your ordinance committee tonight, and I've spoken to all of you about this, all except Councilor Rodriguez, and it, it, you all seem to reflect very positively on it, as did another former city council president, Mayor Robert Sullivan. So I guess from here, I, you would probably want Troy to come up to see if we can afford it. Are there any questions for me? Thank you, Councilor. Any questions, Councilors? Councilor Rodriguez. Well, I, as one of those that sat in that chair, I, I'm not in favor of this. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Um, I would actually prefer to have somebody from the clerk's office, one of the clerks down there, be, be designated as someone that works closely with the, whoever the council president might be. Because I think we go through the council president once a year, um, and to me, we just uh, we just approved a raise for all the councilors in this city, and <clears throat> nobody puts a gun to our heads to become council president. We do it because either we have the time to do it, or have the will to do it, or have the the drive to do it. So I think it's uh, you know perhaps that's something we ought to look into and decide before I run for council president whether or not I have the time to do it. And, and perhaps it should be limited to those that actually do have the time to do it, to do it. Uh, I don't think that uh, the person or the position should be compensated any more than we already are compensated as counselors. But I would prefer to have a, a designation in the, in the clerk's office, one of the clerks that we pay, to be designated as, you know, like a special assistant to the council president to do a lot of the work uh, that perhaps the council president would do. 
uh, mailing out things, making phone calls, whatever, whatever needs to be done. But I think we should just kind of keep that uh, status quo for everybody else. And that's why uh, I, I wouldn't say, I mean, I don't care what the rest of the council does, but that's something that I, I don't think I would support. Okay, and I respect your opinion. In fact, there is someone in the city clerk's office, Diane, who primarily does all of our clerical work or clerical work related to our meetings. She doesn't do private or you know individual clerical work to the best of my knowledge, but she's pretty terrific. Um, I do deal with her regularly and you receive your minutes and your agendas from her as well. Um, I, I think it's appropriate. I, I think there's precedent for it in similar uh, size cities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, I would respectfully request that you vote positively on this tonight. Any other questions, counselors? So I would just like to thank you, Councilor Castro, because being council president does take that little extra time. You do put in more time. There are a lot more events, but that anybody can attend as a city councilor anyways, but you do get certain events as a council president and to really stay on top of things and organize. So um, I think it definitely merits it. I look at both sides, but I also, I don't, <coughs> it wouldn't be something that would motivate me to be a council president. I think right. it would just be a little extra, but um, right. because I think being council president is um, really a passion to really do that, just Please. go that extra mm -hmm. step for the council. But. I actually reflected a lot on your year as council president 2020, because you went above and beyond and then some be as a result of COVID and all of the adjustments we had to make to conduct our, our, our city business. Um, you couldn't have known when you, when you threw your hat in the ring to be the council president that you were going to have that kind of a year. Um, it was really hard and I know it was. It was, but um, I thank you because it does put value to the position. That's right. When you get, and these are really, it's per year and I don't think you know, it's it's not a huge amount. No, so, so this not is like all. for the whole year, and yes. um, it's just a little something to to go that little extra, which is I appreciate right. you putting value in, in yes. into this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other counselors? Any questions for our CFO? Or I, I, I'll move this favorably. Okay, a motion has been made. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Properly second to send this favorably back to the full city council. All those in favor? Oh. Three, two. Three to two. Well, this go, does go back to the full city council and then it depends on what it gets at the full city council. But once again, thank you, councilors. So it goes back favorably back to the full city council? It does. Perfect. When you are ready, uh, Attorney Resnick, item number? Item number four. four. Ordinance and ordinance establishing the wetlands protection ordinance to protect the wetlands, water resources, and adjoining land areas in the city of Brockton. Invited to attend, Susan Acasher, Ward 4 Councilor. Rob May, Director of Economic Planning and Development. So, Councilors, uh, Mr. May could not be here this evening, and I thank you for being here, uh, uh, Councilor Nicastro. But we are going, I will ask for a motion to postpone this. So, when. Can I ask any questions? Motion to postpone. Well, the, you, you Mr. May that, right? is the. Did you file the. That as a sponsor. Oh, you were, okay. All right. Yes, but I think once um, Mr. May can be here, he would be the one to answer the questions for us. Um, I think. You know, I can get a motion to have it postponed. Move to postpone to a, the next ordinance committee meeting. Did Did you uh, want to speak on the motion? All I, all I was going to say is that Mr. May also suggested by email that some other people who were involved in the drafting of it be be invited for the next meeting. It's fairly technical and it's new in the city, so I think it's important to be vetted properly. Thank you, Council. Yes, I believe this is from the state that we're um, being asked to, to pass this. <laughs> Don't bring it out. Do not I will. say let's, that. Okay, let's, Council. Let's it carefully if we're being told the state. They, to that's us. why we're asking to have it be postponed so we can ask our questions. Yeah, there is a second to Far Mr. Council Farrell's. A motion has been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? So this item is postponed until the next um, 
ordinance meeting, and I will make sure, Council, that we invite the um, people, yeah, the additional guests. Thank you. Any other discussions, Councilors? Just, uh, just on this motion, uh, I think I sent an email to you. You probably yeah. haven't had a chance to read it yet, but if we're going to hear from the people who are all in favor of this, there are some people in the community who who engage in conservation work uh, and, and may want to be invited to speak to give us a fair and balanced approach to what this ordinance is actually doing and, and uh, how it would affect the city. So I'll try to give you some names and addresses. That would be great, Councillor. And as with all our ordinance meetings, we have invited guests that are here which uh, who speak on certain matters, but I've always, if there is someone in the chamber that wants to speak and isn't an invited guest, I do uh, allow, as long as they let us know, we give them the opportunity to present or to speak on the matter. So that will happen. But if you have specific names, we'll be more than happy to invite them. Okay. Is that it, councillors? How about a motion? A motion to adjourn. Second. A motion has been made and properly second. All those in favor of adjourning, we are adjourned. <laughs>